What is up everybody? Today I'm gonna be out here. I'm gonna fish a bridge to start. If uh, the bite's not too good, we might hit some standalone structures looking for some sheep's heads, so stay tuned. All right, so yesterday I dug up some sand fleas right there. I'm just gonna pair them with a bottom sweeper jig. There's a lot of tide right now, so we're gonna start with a three quarter ounce, and then as it slows, we'll move to a half and possibly a quarter, so. I think that might be a sheep. Yeah, it definitely is. Literally getting our first sheep before the sun's up, even all the way up. Oh no, striper. All right. Oh, lost my paddle. That would have been bad. All right, so first drop wasn't bad. Yielded a small striper. So there will be no skunk today. Not that that really matters, but see what else is down there. I thought that was a sheep for sure. I thought it was a small sheep. But I should have known better. Just had a hit on that little drop. There we go. Gotta be bass. Oh, he spit it. Had to be a bass. Son of a gun. All right, so we tried fishing the bridge. Um, not much going on right there right now. Could be the tide, could be the water. The water's really dirty. So now we're gonna go try and fish some stand alone structure. So stay tuned. We, uh, our depth finder's not working. I think I gotta clean the transducer. But, uh, kind of guesstimating where the spot was off of prior, you know, knowledge, I guess you would say. A lot, a very snaggy spot, but with snags comes fish. Ooh, look at that. See that? That felt like a tog. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. I think that might be a big tog. Yeah. All right. Damn, son, look at that. Mondo. They know when they're out of season, man. That is a freaking good backwater tog. I mean, look at this. I mean, he ain't no Togzilla, but still a nice Tog, man. Look at that. Beauty. Man, that is a nice fish. Oh, easy, but easy. I'm trying to get you back. Just got her. Oof, he was not getting out. He was double hooked. There you go. Alright, man, that's not bad uh, for not having a work in depth finder right now to be able to find a spot that's you know not easily found without a depth finder kind of use the landmarks around me to try and guesstimate where it would be but Not a bad tog, not as big as that first one, but let me uh, put him down. All 
All right, just put a fresh sand flea on. See if we can't find this little mark again. It's funny, like the depth finder comes in and out, but I don't think it's really accurate right now because it's marking the depth that shouldn't be, should be deeper than what it's saying. Ooh. Oh, come on, come back. There we go. Gotta get him out of that structure. Whew. Those tog are very good at getting you back into it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whoa. That guy was trying to get me right into the pilings. Not a big one. Actually, that's not, that would have been a keeper, go figure. Man. Oh, there we go. Holy smokes. Oh, I don't know if the. Oh, I think this might be it. I don't know that, or it's a nice tog. Oh, sheepy. Oh no. Man, that's a nice sheep. Holy smokes. That guy, he played uh, possum the first half of that fight. Ah, oh, there we go, man. Look at that. All right, let's uh, get this beautiful specimen back in the water. Let him live another day. That's not a bad sheep. Oh man, got me souped. I knew that was coming. All right, so at this point I decided to strap my GoPro onto some crabbing line and drop it down to the bottom. This is a spot that I've been fishing for years, and I actually was curious of what was down there. Now, uh, when I first dropped it down, I, it was kind of a little bit of like a guessing game of how far I was to the bottom. But once I kind of figured it out, I was able to drift along the area that I like to fish. And wasn't really too surprised with what we saw. So the first thing I thought when I saw this area was it looks like a primo tog spot with all the different rocks and different structures down there i feel like for our inshore fishing like this could be a spot in the fall that really heats up uh, when the bigger tog push back in when the water temp drops a little bit but on first drop you know we saw the typical thing sea bass small tog i believe coming up here we see a pair of tog coming out of the structure which is pretty neat to see on camera um, and it makes you wonder how many of those fish are just buried in between some of the crevices that we kind of missed because we were dragging the camera along. Now, there were a ton of these little sea bass around. I cut a lot of them out of the video because, you know, no, most people don't want to watch somebody reeling in a four inch sea bass. But uh, back to the structure. What kind of puzzled me is this area is kind of in a secluded area in the middle of nowhere in the bay. So I'm kind of curious of how all these rocks got there. In fact, uh, some of these structures that we're passing right now look like bricks. 
you know, it almost makes you wonder, you know, how exactly that structure got where it got. But I guess that's just going to be one of those things you'll never know. All right, so this is my next drop. I kind of cut out the GoPro dropping down to the bottom and me adjusting to, you know, the depth. But uh, this was on the other side of the structure in maybe five feet deeper of water. And one thing I noticed right away that the rocks and the structure itself here were much larger. Um, you know, you see, we were seeing the same thing. I, like you just saw a tog in the previous frame. Uh, I did find, which was kind of interesting, that the tog and sea bass were not phased by the camera. In fact, the tog seemed more curious of the camera than than anything. But you know, this is bumping on the bottom and. It's not really scaring many of the fish because you keep seeing them, you know, pop up right behind once I kind of figure out that I'm on bottom. Yeah, as we were drifting again, here's some more tog right there, just a little one. It's funny how unfazed they were by the camera. I mean, they just were very curious. But we're going to come up on a part of the structure that I was very interested in right here coming up. Uh, it's a little blurry right now, but kind of looks like a piling, if, if I had to venture a guess. That's not a rock. Um, I'm not sure how it got there. Like I said, we're, we're really close to an actual, like, sod bank slash marsh. But other than that, like, the nearest, you know, structure is probably a half mile or further away so i'm assuming the storm when a lot of these docks got broken from you know previous hurricanes it probably just got pushed with the tide over there and just kind of stuck in the mud but as we're drifting along here's a different bottom now um very stony which is kind of interesting you know we weren't really seeing those small stones back on that the head of that structure that we were at initially and see that I couldn't tell if that was another piling just laying flat but uh, I pulled the camera up a little too early right there I was being a little more cautious with the camera just cuz I mean just judging by the structure it seems like it'd be a very easy spot to get wedged in between rocks so a few times I kind of missed out on some good footage but uh, coming up something interesting that I never caught before but see that little sea urchin right there on the bottom that's like primo sheep's head tog bait man i know they eat them and all right so this was the last drop with the gopro um tide was going out and i was starting to get pulled a little harder i think i actually dropped it on a twisted t can and i'm that's what i'm assuming that is right there um which is really sad that people's trash is washing up into this structure but one thing I did notice on this side of the structure where it's more of a sand bottom and the rocks are a little more spread out there were definitely more sea bass around rather than tog all in all I was super pumped with the overall footage we were able to get with you know just dragging a GoPro blindly I watch a lot of the Skinner videos when he uses those submersible drones and get some really awesome underwater footage and kind of made me think about the areas I fish because honestly just dropping this down and seeing what's down there gives you so much knowledge into you know what you should be doing moving forward to catch the fish that are down there all in all I was super pumped with you know the footage we were able to get for this day uh, my next goal is to try this on some of the bridges that I fished just to see what's down there and what the structures actually look like you know 20 30 feet down let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see and i'll try and make it happen thanks for watching